Hello, World Economic News for Wednesday, and I've set the volume levels higher, so I hope this is better for everyone. Sorry for making you scrabble with your volume controls. Right, let's start with the ECRI from Doug Short, because he makes such pretty charts. The blue line is the um, ECRI WLI, Weekly Leading index and it gives us a look ahead to what might happen in the future and the green and red blocks behind are how GDP has reacted to the WLI or at least how things have turned out. You can see the grey line, the great de depression type thing, the great recession, then all sorts of optimism up to 9th of October, 09. Then it was down for the double dipper through last summer, but the double dipper never really came. Everything in the world got better. Um, it's come back up again, but not as high as it was, and it's on its way down again. Now this is what I'm going to say. Um, at 1.7 uh, that's just above the zero line or the 50 line just about positive just about in growth but desperately poor moving on uh, from a different source this is the same ECRI smoothed as in they've taken some of the kinks out of it um, with the S&P stock market uh, reading behind and you can see they follow each other well, one follows one and one follows the other. We'll never know which is which, but you can see they are joined at the hip. Um, I only put that in. Um, stock markets don't bother me that much, but they do bother other people. And I think so much of this is psychological. And if the stock markets do go down again from here, I think that will be psychological damage. Over in Europe, this is the Eurozone Composite Output um, PMI purchasing managers index and you can see it's it tried to go up at the start of this year but it's just fallen off in the last three months and this is the story I'm painting it it doesn't have to go down like it didn't go down last summer into a double dipper but it just seems to be that the whole world is heading in that direction. I can't see why it won't go down further. And these things are psychological. If they go down further, they generally go down even further, if you get midrift. Core versus periphery PMI output index for the Eurozone. Rest of the Eurozone, uh, X, France and Germany in green, below the 50 line, they are in contraction. Not surprising, that obviously includes the pigs and Spain and Italy, who we know are in trouble. But even France and Germany there. At the start of this year, everything was looking really quite good. But the last three months, things have really dropped off. There's a little blue blob below that orange blob showing that Germany is actually slightly lower than France. And certainly heading towards that 50 level. And below the 50 level is contraction. China. PMI um, on the manufacturing side is now below the 50 line. It's in contraction. Uh, even more importantly, the Chinese export order component is now below the 50 line. Below there, that's in contraction. And the export orders generally project out further ahead because um the managers the purchasing managers have bought things in from china they know what it's going to be and if the chinese exports are down that means stuff isn't going to come into the shops because people don't think they're going to be able to sell it it's all pointing towards some sort of a double dip and then it will depend on reactions of them what happens next this is from Monday's Financial Times. Oh dear, it's just another euro crash, but just these are bank stocks down 4, 5 and 6%. Unicredit, Dexia, Intesa, BMPS, um, that's Monty Pasha that I've spoke of in on Monday's um, World News. Credit Agricole and Lloyd's representing France and uh, UK. We know the banks are still in trouble and they're covering up by fudging their accounting best they can. If there is any sort of a double dip, 
that it will become impossible for them to keep covering up the um, fudged accounting and the sovereign nations will have to come in again behind the banks whether the people like it or not now we come to Marshall Orbuck writing a, an article for Eve Smith at Naked Capitalism, but here is quoting Warren Mosler. And if you didn't get that, this is MMT stuff. And I've put it in because part of them that are going to react to whatever happens out there with the economy are politicians. Politicians can't be expected to understand how economies work. Economists don't understand how economy, e economies work. Nobody understands seemingly how economies work. MMT, if it's good for anything, I think it's good for an awful lot more than this, but if it's good for anything, it gives a simple definition of how economies work, or at least the money aspect of economies work, with its vertical money from governments, horizontal from banks, and a huge difference between the UK and US, who have control over their own fiat money distribution, uh, and the Eurozone, which has clamped itself into a gold standard, and what it means, that differential. If for nothing else, just to prove that simple way of looking at things is wrong you have to do thinking and it seems that no amount of thinking has been done by them they're just reacting to what is out there and if anybody ever is going to react in a clever way they're going to have to understand a few facts and i think that he simply do not understand any of the facts effectively any of the facts them the people that control entire economies because their actions cause bigger waves than other people do not know what they are doing and if we go into an another recession which might involve another banking uh, crisis they will react in saving the banks why should they do it? Do you know why they should do it? Do you know why they shouldn't do it? If less money stop, starts coming into the, their exchequers, into the treasury, should the governments keep spending or should they tighten and not spend because less money is coming in? Which should they do? It's fine that we don't know, but it's shocking that they don't know. Bye.